Thank you very much. And uh, I would like to start also by thanking the organizers for uh, inviting me here. So what I would like to uh, tell you about in this first talk of this mini symposium um, on topology is uh, uh, our work on topology of density matrices and their detection. Now, uh, topological states of matter are, of course, uh, interesting, uh, are very interesting, and I probably don't have to tell this, uh, basically for two reasons. Uh, the first reason is uh, that topological systems can have very uh, exciting uh, uh, exotic quantum states like anionic excitations on top of a, a fraction quantum Hall system, uh, which can be used also in uh, connection with quantum information. And uh, likewise, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, since uh, topological systems are characterized by integer quantum numbers. Uh, whenever you have a spatial border between the two uh, uh, systems having different quantum numbers, uh, something uh, uh, has to happen. And what's happened there is that there are edge states which are protected. Uh, and uh, so you can have protected edge states and edge transport. So all of these features are uh, very nice, but uh, uh, there are a couple of questions uh, open. And the first question I want to address is, is simply, uh, what is left from topology if you go to a system which has a finite temperature? So most of the things which we know about topological systems are actually defined as properties of the ground state uh, wave function of a single body or a many body problem. And uh, maybe even more interesting is uh, the question, can we extend the notion of topology to a driven system, uh, systems out of equilibrium? Why could that be interesting? Well, if we have, uh, say, the steady state of a driven uh, dissipative system, uh, which is a unique attractor of the dynamics, then it basically means that if you perturb the system slightly, that the system uh, uh, tries to bring itself back to that state. So, so there is a built-in uh, protection uh, of these kind of systems. And so the idea is, can we actually connect uh, topological protection, uh, which protects you, for example, the edge current of a, uh, of a quantum hall system is uh, insensitive to disorder, but is not, uh, is not insensitive to losses. So the question is, can we combine this and maybe even make it uh, insensitive to losses? OK, so uh, in fact, I will not try to uh, uh, talk about uh, the topology in, in the very general sense of open systems, but I will restrict myself to non-interacting uh, fermion uh, models. And the reason is that even for closed systems, that is the, the, uh, uh, the, the, this is a field which is uh, mostly understood, because we know that uh, just by characterizing the property of a, a single particle Hamiltonian with respect to time reversal, charge conjugation, and the combination of the two, uh, we can get a complete classification of all sorts of uh, uh, topological uh, uh, insulators in uh, free fermion models. So, so in essence, I would like to uh, uh, concentrate on something similar uh, uh, to free fermion models. And uh, the uh, um, analog of free fermion systems uh, for mixed states are Gaussian systems, Gaussian fermionic systems. Gaussian systems are characterized by a density matrix uh, which is completely uh, determined by single particle correlations. And uh, in fact, you can write the, the density matrix in, uh, in this way, where this uh, two by two matrix can just be uh, written as any sort of combination of uh, two particle, uh, single particle correlations. And uh, as, uh, Gaussian systems are, are systems where the Hamiltonian is, uh, 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 is B quadratic in fermion operators. And maybe there's a coupling to reservoirs, which are described by Lindblad uh, operators, which are linear in the, in the fermions. So this is more or less the setting which I would like to discuss now. OK, so the first question to ask is, um, if you go from a closed system to open systems, uh, what are potential topological invariants which we can use to classify these systems? And in fact, I would like to uh, 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 point out that uh, many of these known topological invariants actually fail if you go to mixed states. However, there is one uh, which uh, can be used, and this is uh, the uh, polarization. And the polarization is actually uh, directly connect, uh, connected to topological charge pumps. So after uh, uh, first introducing what I suggest as a uh, topological invariant for open systems, uh, I uh, will discuss um, uh, topological pumps um, in, at finer temperature and also uh, with uh, external drive and dissipation. 
And out of this, I will uh, define uh, an, a generalization of an, uh, a geometric phase, uh, what we call an ensemble geometric phase, uh, which allows us to classify um, uh, these, uh, uh, these uh, uh, topology in these open systems. And at the end, I will t t tell a little bit about how to actually detect polarization and uh, how to realize uh, what we call an effective Hamiltonian, which will come up in that context. OK, so let me start and uh, tell you a little bit about uh, things which you may know already very well, namely about uh, topological invariance. Uh, uh, for the systems I'm interested in, uh, they are basically uh, um, uh, described by geometric phases, like a Berry phase or in the case of a lattice Hamiltonian, the Zuck phase. And uh, if you have a one-dimensional system and you have an Hamiltonian depending on a certain parameter and uh, you change this parameter in a closed loop, then uh, this uh, phase here has, uh, can have some, has to return to itself modulo multiples of 2 pi. And this winding number, uh, which shows up there, is actually a, a topological invariant. Now, uh, in 2D systems, you don't even need to have an external parameter because uh, then typically you have uh, two internal parameters like a momentum in x and y direction, and that defines a churn number, uh, uh, which again is an integer invariant characterizing the, uh, uh, the topological insulator. Now, uh, uh, both of them are actually tightly c connected to a measurable quantity. And this has been pointed out by Taul's Komodo uh, Nightingale and Denise in the early 80s, who showed that in a topological in insulator, if uh, the Zuck phase has a non-trivial winding, this is related to a transport of charge or transport of particles in the bulk of, of the system. Now, just to illustrate this a little bit, let's have a look at a very simple model, uh, uh, maybe the simplest one which you can think of in one dimension. Uh, this is the Zu Schriefer Heger model. These are basically fermions hopping on a bipartite lattice with alternating uh, hopping amplitudes T1 and T2 uh, at half filling. Uh, and uh, this model has uh, chiral symmetry. And uh, if you calculate for this model the, uh, the Zuck phase, you find that it can take on only two values, namely either uh, 0 or pi. And, uh, and in fact, uh, 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 you can go from here to here by exchanging the uh, two tunneling rates, T1 and T2. Now, if you look at the bulk of the system, you immediately recognize that these two phases don't, uh, uh, they're, they're not different. They're actually identical. However, if you make a cut somewhere, uh, then you realize that uh, the, uh, the two uh, uh, cases uh, differ uh, uh, by the properties of the, of the edge here. So here there's a, a single edge state. Here there's none. The, uh, this is a two-band model, so we have, of course, uh, the spectrum is just, uh, just consists of two bands, and it looks identical in the case where T1 is less than T2 or and T1 is larger than T2. Now, if you want to go from here to here uh, directly uh, by just changing the two hopping uh, constants, then we see that it's not possible directly without closing the energy gap. So, in other words, uh, you cannot connect this one phase with the other without going through uh, a phase transition. There's a way around that, however, and this way around ha has been looked at by uh, Reis and Mehler also in the, uh, in the 80s. Uh, they just said, well, let's add a staggered potential, um, so let's move uh, the, uh, um, uh, the uh, energy of one lattice side down and the other one, and the next one, uh, uh, up by the same amount. Uh, this then actually breaks the chiral symmetry, uh, and now uh, the situation is slightly different. Because now you have a two-dimensional parameter space. You have the difference of the two hopping rates, and you have this uh, staggered potential. The SSH model lives on this green line here, and the center point is the one uh, where there is a phase transition where the two bands touch. Now, uh, it, is, it is, however, possible to connect the, the points on the two sides if you just go around this uh, singularity. And this is what is called a charge pump. So let's see what's, what's going to happen here. So let's start at uh, this uh, place over here. and Let's introduce a cut, which has an edge state. And let's assume this edge state is empty for the, uh, in the beginning. And now let's uh, just uh, uh, go around in the parameter space. Uh, the system always stays in the, in, the, in the gapped phase, so there's no uh, gap closing because we avoid this point. And if you go one cycle around, we realize that now there is one particle sitting here at the edge. So this is exactly this relation uh, uh, put forward by, uh, by Tauls, uh, is that the uh, uh, quantization of the change of the Zuck phase is directly related to topological pumps. 
Okay, so this is all uh, well known. And now the, story, the question is, uh, what is gonna change if we go to system with a finite temperature? Or uh, even systems which do not, uh, which are out of equilibrium? Then uh, the system is described by a density matrix, and so in general, uh, there is no easy way of defining uh, a geometric phase. Uh, so the second question is, what about these uh, pumps, these uh, charge pumps? And uh, what one realizes is actually that as soon as you add, for example, temperature to the system, the uh, uh, transport of, uh, of charge is no longer quantized. This is a, a paper by uh, Matthias Troyer's group, and here you see the quantized charge as a function of the temperature uh, in units of the, uh, of the gap. And as you can see, as soon as the temperature gets uh, comparable to the energy gap, the, the transport is no longer quantized. And uh, this is what you would expect, because you uh, partially occupy the excited band, which has a transport in the opposite direction. So these two uh, uh, counteract and, uh, uh, and eventually uh, cancel each other completely. So this means that also uh, topological pumps or the charge transport is no longer a good quantity to uh, look at the um, at topological properties at a finer temperature. However, there is a third quantity which in the for ground state systems is uh, directly related to the other two and this is uh, uh, the polarization. And it has been shown uh, by King, Smith, and Vanderbilt in the, also in the early 80s that also the, uh, the change of the polarization in units of the, uh, uh, um, of the uh, 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 cell length of a unit cell is identical to the change of the Zack phase. Now what the polarization is, is, it is in essence just the center of mass of the electron wave function within a unit cell. Uh, uh, it turns out, however, that this definition of polarization is not so useful. So uh, what we are looking at is a generalization of this uh, put forward by Resta, uh, which is uh, applicable also to systems which have uh, periodic boundary conditions. So if you, uh, uh, if you would, uh, for, for, for a moment, just pull the logarithm inside here, you would immediately see that these two here uh, uh, just agree because as x is nothing else than the center of mass uh, on, on this, uh, on this uh, complete ring. Uh, one thing which you notice, however, is uh, what the polarization is actually, uh, uh, actually measuring. It measures the phase of the expectation value of a unitary. And since it's a phase, uh, its changes have to be quantized by construction uh, if you make a closed loop in parameter space, because a phase has to go back to itself uh, uh, or to multiple, or multiples of 2 pi uh, uh, if you make a closed loop in parameter space. The good thing, however, is that uh, polarization you can uh, evaluate uh, for all states. It does not have to be uh, uh, ground states does not have to be non-interacting systems, can be an interacting system, and, and it uh, can in particular also be a mixed state. So uh, we can evaluate this with a density matrix. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, let's have a look what polarization is actually doing if we look at uh, 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 topological pumps. So the first, uh, um, the first uh, uh, model I want to look at is again this uh, rice mele model, this very simple uh, model, but now at finer temperature. Now, uh, if we look at uh, zero temperature and uh, plot the polarization as a function of the two parameters, the difference of the two hoppings and the staggered potential, uh, then you can uh, see that uh, if, if we go around in parameter space uh, around this uh, uh, degeneracy point, then the polarization winds by one unit. And that's what we would expect, because that's related to the change of, uh, of the Zack phase, it's related to the uh, uh, particle transport. Now the question is, what happens if we add temperature to the game? And let's add a temperature which is much higher than the energy gap uh, in the system. So this is here uh, t equal to 100 in, in units of the uh, energy gap at a, at a certain point in parameter space. And now what you see of that the polarization qualitatively changes. But the important thing is what it does not change is the winding. So if you go around the, uh, uh, the singularity, you still pick up a winding of exactly one uh, unit in, in the system, and the, the winding is not dying out. And in fact, uh, which is even more interesting is that the, the, uh, this property remains if you crank up the temperature even more. 
And it only changes if you hit uh, t equal to infinity. Since this is a two-band model, we can, in principle, go above t infinity and go to negative temperatures. And as soon as we do this, if we go from, from uh, positive temperatures to negative temperatures, then all what's going to happen is that now the, uh, the, the sign of the polarization winding changes. So it looks like that the polarization, in some sense, picks up the topology of the most populated band. Uh, for uh, positive temperatures, it's the lower one in a two-band model, and for the negative temperatures, it's the upper one. And that is uh, uh, what seems to happen here. Now, let me uh, uh, introduce a second uh, model, which doesn't even have an Hamiltonian, and, and there is no temperature, but is a system which is uh, entirely driven by external uh, reservoirs. So again, uh, this is a one-dimensional model, uh, and uh, a one-dimensional model of, uh, of spins. And as you can see from the color code, uh, I, I'm going to um, set it up in a way that it has a unit cell of uh, uh, two sides. And the way I do this is I couple uh, the system to uh, reservoirs only. So there's no Hamiltonian. One could add one, but it's not really needed. So it's, it's essential that we have only uh, Lindbladian drive. And uh, I assume that there are two types of Lindblad uh, operators. In order to have something non-trivial, uh, they should uh, uh, talk to at least two neighboring sites. So uh, I consider some reservoirs, uh, LA, which always uh, couple the sites within uh, one unit cell. And then I consider a second type of um, Limbladians, uh, which uh, couple uh, uh, the cells of neighboring, uh, the sites of neighboring uh, unit cells. And, um, and uh, most importantly, these Lindblad operators are linear in the fermion creation and annihilations. Uh, so the, there is a steady state, and the steady state is Gaussian. And therefore, we can uh, calculate everything and, and, and uh, determine all the, the, the properties uh, almost analytically. Now, let's see what, the, what these uh, uh, Lindblad generators, what they are doing. Uh, so there are two parameters. There's this parameter epsilon, and there's this parameter lambda. So let's first look at this parameter lambda. If we put lambda equal to plus 1, then only these terms here uh, remain. And what they, in, in essence, are doing is that they take out excitation from the green sides and put this, them into the blue sides. And likewise, the other one takes out excitation from the green side and puts it in the uh, blue sides. And if we uh, uh, take uh, lambda equal to minus 1, then only this term survives. And then it's exactly the other way around. The excitation is taken from the blue side into the green sides and also uh, here. And then, so, uh, and then there's a second uh, parameter, which is this epsilon, uh, which basically uh, controls the coupling strengths to the upper reservoirs and the coupling strengths to the uh, lower uh, reservoirs. So we have a two-parameter um, uh, 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 space uh, 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 Lindbladian, and therefore the steady state of the system is uh, de determined by these two parameters. Now, if you calculate for this model also the, uh, the polarization uh, and, and as, as a function of these two parameters, then we find that the uh, polarization is actually also, sh also shows a winding. So therefore, we, we can argue that uh, there is a, a topological feature here, namely uh, that uh, if you go in parameter space ar uh, uh, around this critical point here, then you see an, uh, a, a, a winding of, of one unit of the, of the polarization. Now, uh, this is an open driven system, and I started off with the motivation that these open driven systems could show some uh, enhanced uh, robustness against uh, uh, perturbations. And uh, so let me look at this a little bit more in detail. Uh, so if we add to the model Hamiltonian disorder, so what I plotted here is the polarization uh, when you go around this loop uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, 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 proportional to the angle phi. And uh, as you can see, Hamiltonian disorder uh, uh, does change the polarization slightly at some points, but does not affect the winding. And by the way, it does also not affect the symmetry protected points at uh, pi and zero, which, are, which stay exactly the same. Well, now you could ask the question, what's, what's going to happen if I add losses? So if I add uh, dissipation to the system, is that uh, still surviving? And uh, so this is a result here. These are homogeneous uh, local losses, so independent losses on, on all the sides. And as you can see, uh, again, there is no or almost no effect. The winding stays the same, and the um, uh, uh, symmetry protected points have exactly the same uh, values as, as before. So this is an example where 
um, in a driven system, uh, you can have uh, uh, protection, topological protection against losses. Uh, Okay, now, um, the, now the question is, or maybe I now, by now I have uh, convinced yourself, uh, you, uh, you that, um, that uh, polarization is a good measure to uh, detect uh, topological properties for uh, mixed states. Now the question is, can we understand this a bit better? Can we actually construct something uh, like an, a geometric phase for, for the ensemble? And uh, for this, let me uh, go back and show you this uh, numerical calculation for the uh, final temperature uh, uh, rise mailer model. Uh, uh, f this is uh, done for a small system of eight sides. This, again, is the, is the angle. And this is for different temperatures. For low temperatures, or t equal to zero, essentially, is the, is the line in the center. And then for high temperatures are these curves which, which wind, uh, which, which have these steps. Now. If you increase the system size, so if you go to 64 sides, then the picture looks like this. If you go to 256 sides, the picture looks like this. And if you go to 512 sides, the picture looks like this. So what you can see here is that if we increase the system size, the uh, polarization at finite temperature uh, seems to approach the uh, value at zero temperature. And in fact, this is what we could show uh, analytically. Uh, you can show that the polarization of the steady state of any unique steady state of a Gaussian system, it does not have to be a thermal system, it can be any Gaussian system, is actually uh, given by the polarization of a pure state plus some correction which scales away uh, uh, with uh, the inverse of the system size. And this state here turns out to be the ground state of some Hamiltonian, and this Hamiltonian is this, effective, is this effective Hamiltonian, uh, which uh, is uh, where the single uh, particle Hamiltonian matrix is, in essence, the single particle correlation function of the fermionic system at finite temperature or in the eddy steady state. Uh, now, uh, and now this, of course, and, and then there comes some, something uh, on top of it. If you look at the winding of the polarization, I told you this has to be an integer. So this, the winding of this has to be an integer. The winding of this has to be an integer. So therefore, this has to be an integer as well. Uh, but it also has to scale away with the system size. So the only integer which is compatible uh, to this is 0. And as a consequence, the winding of the uh, polarization in any Gaussian steady state is actually identical to the winding uh, of a pure state, polarization of, in a pure state. And this pure state is the ground state of this effective Hamiltonian. Now, for finite temperature models, one can actually show that this, this uh, matrix is re directly related to the uh, Hamiltonian. So that's why uh, we saw in the, in the rice mailer model that uh, we pick up essentially what, what we get at t equal to 0. So now, since we have, uh, we have this, now we can define uh, a geometric phase. And this is nothing else than the Zack phase of this uh, uh, pure state. And this can be applied not only to uh, systems at a finite temperature, but also at uh, steady states of, uh, of open systems where there is even not a Hamiltonian, but there is a single particle uh, uh, correlation matrix. OK, so uh, what this shows is that one can classify uh, the uh, topology of uh, Gaussian fermionic models just in terms of the effective of this effective Hamiltonian, so in, in, in terms of the single particle uh, correlators. And, uh, and, and so this was actually already uh, conjectured in a paper by Charles uh, Berlin and, and Sebastian some time ago, uh, and uh, is now more or less uh, now proven by why this is actually the case. And there's uh, two interesting uh, uh, um, conclusions from that is, namely, uh, we can now understand when a topological phase transition can happen. Well, it can happen under two conditions. I mean, the first condition is that the steady state is no longer unique. So uh, if a damping gap closes, uh, and uh, there's a second uh, solution, which is also infinitely long-lived, then, then there can be a topological phase transition. This is the analog, in essence, to the closing of an Hamiltonian gap. Uh, and the second possibility is that the gap of this effective Hamiltonian here closes. And there may actually be interesting uh, extension to interacting systems, but I don't have time to talk about this uh, now, uh, unless you ask me in a, a question session. 
And now we can understand why, for example, in the finite temperature rise Miele model, the, the phase tr uh, transition happened at infinite temperature. Because for a thermal state, the uh, correlation matrix is just given by the Hamiltonian itself, multiplied by uh, uh, the inverse temperature. Uh, so a topological transition can happen either when the, when the energy gap of the Hamiltonian, underlying Hamiltonian, closes, or when the temperature goes to, infi uh, to infinity. And that's exactly uh, what we observed here. Uh, we can also understand why in this reservoir-induced topological pump, uh, uh, this point here at the center is a topological, uh, 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 is a, uh, a topological singularity, because if you calculate uh, for this model the damping spectrum, uh, first of all, you don't see anything interesting happening here. But if you calculate the spectrum of the single particle correlator, you find that there's actually a touching point uh, exactly at the center, and that is the reason for the uh, uh, topological phase transition. Okay, so now uh, I, I told you that polarization, or I hope I convinced you that polarization and the uh, uh, related uh, ensemble geometric phase are good candidates for cl uh, classifying uh, topology in mixed systems. But now, of course, we know there is no quantized transport. So how do we actually detect uh, these uh, uh, properties, this quantity? And uh, so here's a, uh, here's a proposal um, uh, uh, based on an interferometric de detection scheme. So this is a simple Marcina interferometer. Uh, where, where in, in one arm, there is a fixed phase shift. And in the other arm, we put our one-dimensional uh, fermion lattice. And we assume that the fermions interact off-resonantly uh, with, with the light mode, which propagates through here. And in essence, what this gives is just a kernel linearity uh, 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 proportional to the density of, of, of fermions. And now if we choose the mode function of the light mode going through here to have a gradient in, along the axis of, uh, of the lattice, then it's in essence, the effective Hamiltonian is proportional to, uh, 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 is proportional to the uh, center of mass of, of, of the fermions. So uh, this is the center of mass operator. And as a consequence, uh, the photons which go through the interferometer will pick up a, a unitary, if you choose the parameters in the right way, will pick up a unitary which exactly corresponds to the, uh, uh, to the expectation, uh, to the exponent of uh, 2 pi i over L times x, which is the uh, operator uh, uh, which uh, determines the uh, many body polarization. If the photon runs through this arm and if it runs through the upper arm, it just picks up a reference uh, uh, phase and therefore detecting the different signal of the two will pick up the argument of, uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, the uh, expectation value of the T operator and this is exactly the uh, polarization. Okay, so uh, in the last uh, two minutes, uh, let me also uh, tell you one uh, other idea which we have and uh, how we can actually uh, realize this effective Hamiltonian by uh, topology transfer. So the idea here is uh, let's consider our finite temperature or driven model and let's couple it dispersively to a one-dimensional uh, fermion lattice uh, which we can keep at low temperature, so close at t equal to zero, say. And uh, for the sake of discussion, let's assume that uh, the, uh, we have a density-density type coupling in momentum space. Uh, if you want to know a bit more details of how to realize it, ask me later. Uh, 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 but if we have uh, something like this, where alpha and alpha prime are the indices for the, for the bands, because we have uh, here uh, maybe a multiband uh, problem, uh, if this coupling here is sufficiently weak, then the uh, dynamics of the auxiliary system uh, can be treated in mean field approximation. So we basically can just replace the operators here of the, uh, 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 of the system to be probed by their average uh, value. And once we do this, you immediately realize that the Hamiltonian, the actual Hamiltonian of the auxiliary system uh, has a single particle uh, Hamiltonian matrix, which is just given by the correlation matrix of the, uh, uh, of the system to be probed. So as a consequence, uh, the, um, uh, uh, the uh, uh, winding of the polarization in the open system is just the winding of the polarization in the auxiliary system. And since this is operating at t equal to zero, this leads uh, directly to a quantized uh, transport, so we can detect the trans uh, quantized transport in the auxiliary system. Okay, just uh, to show you that this is not just, uh, 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 does not only work in mean field, these are uh, 
and numerical simulations, uh, the winding of the polarization of the open system, and this is a transport in the, in the uh, auxiliary one, that it makes us jump here just because we calculate this on a, uh, uh, on a cylinder. And so you see there's a, uh, uh, the, the, the winding is picked up by the transport in the auxiliary system. Okay, so let me summarize. Uh, I hope I have convinced you that uh, uh, Gaussian fermionic systems at finite temperature or at, at, at non-equilibrium can be classified by an effective Hamiltonian whose uh, Hamiltonian matrix is a single particle correlator. Uh, uh, we can introduce a topological invariant, which is, uh, the Zach, or is related to the Zach phase or the polarization uh, uh, of the ground state of this Hamiltonian. Uh, and uh, and uh, I have shown you that uh, how to detect uh, the polarization or how to realize this effective Hamiltonian via uh, topology transfer. And uh, I would like to thank the uh, people involved. There are people in my group, Dominic Linsner, uh, Lukas, and, and uh, Bill. And we had the collaboration with uh, Charles, Sebastian, and Alex. And I should also thank for previous contributions to Dr. Gust. And with this, I thank you for your attention.